All right, so we're back on Social Media Meltdown with Caitlin and Joe, and now we have Jake Duhame with us, who does the social media for the Detroit Red Wings. And uh, how's everything going? I mean, you guys got a booth down here. You've seen a lot of great stuff and great people. Yeah, you know, it's uh, the first year we started it, we, uh, we were really the primary sponsor, and it was more or less our fans. And now that we're in year three and we actually have more sponsors, our, sh our focus has shifted to where we have more tech-savvy people in here who embrace and engage this stuff rather than a typical Red Wings event. So I'm actually much happier when we're less involved and you get more <laughs> more interesting uh, tech-savvy people this year than you know in years past. Uh, speaking of tech-savvy people, I feel like, uh, and maybe just because I love the Red Wings and I follow you guys closely, <laughs> you seem to have a very tech-savvy following for the Red Wings. Is that... I don't know, because like, usually I'm the first one that can, that will be a, like, why can't we be more like New York or <laughs> Boston or San Jose and be playing in this wonderful tech playing field where you have a bazillion startups right at your door and everyone wants to do things for free and for you know like yeah. tech startup spaces and you're just calling your friends over coffee and and literally like taking it from there. So I think you know there it's getting better. Mm -hmm. um, we're still not. You know, we're still not Boston, we're still, still not that. Silicon Valley, yeah. we're still not New York, and we're still not Los Angeles. But again, you're you're progressing it with your fan base, and uh, you're getting them involved in different ways each season. So it's changed, it's getting better, it, it's getting more advanced, and you're starting to see different things pop up. I, I had mentioned earlier during one of our interviews that I believe you guys hit a, hit a landmark um, with the most social or the most Facebook followers of any professional mm -hmm. sports team is that how uh, any in the National Hockey League which <gasps> is uh, it's a wonderful thing to have and then it's one of those things where you have everyone trying to, <laughs> to get a piece of it at the same time so uh, it's the bane of uh, it's sometimes the bane of my job where it's like oh you have 1.3 million followers and I'm like well <laughs> realistically the way Facebook works is if you get a good piece of content 17% of the audience will see it mm -hmm. so you don't really have 1.3 million followers you just can blast 100,000 consumers at a time exactly. and what you blast dictates what gets seen so there's that content game that's constantly being played where you want to constantly be entertaining and funny and and really engaging but uh, you also want to make money on it, you know, at the same time. So mm -hmm. we've we've handled that balance quite nicely. Yeah, it, it seems like you guys have. Um, how how, how do, do you think that social media has changed professional sports? Oh, this is easy. I <laughs> mean, it's it's changed the whole landscape because. Um, ESPN introduced this thing way back in the day called the bottom line and you used to get your scores at 28 and 58 after the hour yeah. and you used to sit there and watch I don't know sailing America's Cup sailing and you're like I Come just want to see the score of the, the Tigers score. game <laughs> and then the, it would pop up and then you'd sit there for two and a half minutes and you'd get your score and you'd feel refreshed and then you'd do the same thing 30 minutes later especially if you weren't in market mm -hmm. now all of the access you want to any sport you need is right at your fingertips. And for a fan, uh, you're starting to see the ultimate inconvenience to where athletes have never been easier or more accessible, to where teams have been never easier or more accessible, to where tickets have never been easier or more accessible. So social media has changed the way fans engage with everything about their team. Mm -hmm. It used to be read the newspaper in the morning. Mm -hmm. Now it's see what your favorite column is just tweeting out there right after the game as he is in the locker room talking to an athlete. Mm -hmm. So it's a speed thing, but it's more importantly, it's just an access thing. It's never been easier to interact with your team. Do you think um, it's uh, the industry is focused more on the fans then than it was before? Do, you, do, do they care more about what everyone's saying and how everyone feels since it's so mass communicated? Here's what it is. Uh, your fans, your consumers are being pickier than ever because they've never had more access. No. And in terms of being picky, I don't have to go to the ballpark anymore <laughs> to engage with my favorite team. I no longer have to watch the game on TV. So now you have to give me a reason, and this is the first, this is the front line. Give me a reason to buy a ticket. Mm -hmm. Give me a reason to buy a t-shirt. Give me a reason to watch a game. And that's where the game has changed because this is your very front line for an entire generation, an entire younger generation of fans to engage with your product. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know where the question was, but this is <laughs> this is basically the front lines and you're manning the front lines on a day-to-day -day basis and your fans are really active and involved with your team, mm -hmm. but they're involved on these mediums. So how do you take it from social to buying a ticket? Social to buying a $20 t-shirt, 
social to watching your game on TV. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much um, where social media and sports is at right now. It's it's the first line of the relationship for a wide number of fans. I, I think a lot of a lot of the brands um, on social media. I feel like. Uh, in the sports industry they're doing a really great job and it's one of the things that trans that translates really well to social media um, maybe because they're able to use so many different platforms but um, what and do also you think? I mean the, sorry go ahead the root of like a fan is they're automatically a, a fan of it you know like yep. oh okay you have I, I love the Red Wings I'm gonna follow them on Twitter yep. so like you get a lot of fans like that I'm wondering if if you see a lot of like dead weight uh, in your social media I, I, like, do you want to know the surprising thing? Yeah, I do want to know the surprising I, thing. I wouldn't <laughs> call it dead weight, but I would say your diehard consumers uh-huh. are going to be with you regardless. Our diehard fans, the ones that call up and will go to every game and will watch every game, yeah. it doesn't matter what we do on social so because they're always going to be... They're going to be happy when the team loses. They're going to want to talk about trades. I mean, they don't need the Red Wings social to enhance the community. So for them, and no offense to them because we have the, the most amazing fan base in the National Hockey League. I agree. But <laughs> it's not where the opportunity is for a sports team on social. The last two years I've operated, my most coveted consumers have been the Caitlin Shelbys of the world, <laughs> have been 18 to 35-year-old women who, uh, us as guys, sports is a social experience. It just happens. Hey, you want to come over and watch the game? The game's on tonight. You want to come over and watch the fight? You know, let's split, a, let's split the tab and watch the Pacquiao fight. For, for women, it's... I'm dating a guy. I kind of want to make a make a date special. We'll <laughs> go to a game. I kind of want something different for my girls' night out. I kind of, you know, I'm connecting to Detroit. You know, I'm pro Detroit, so I'm gonna like the Red Wings. Yeah. I am away from Detroit, but I'm from Detroit, so go Red Wings. Um, that piece of apparel is really cute, so I'm gonna buy it and look <laughs> like I, you know, so many opportunities at that level to take that consumer that may be very casual and turn them into a fan so for for someone running a social account that is one of the biggest opportunities it sounds like 18 to 35 year old women and it has to be an an engagement thing but so i mean can you over engage the fans is is there a point where you can over engage and fatigue them if you're not funny and you're not entertaining you're not doing it right yeah I joked yesterday and, you know, I posted a picture of uh, Mike Vernon, well, what happened after the Mike Vernon-Patrick Waugh fight from 1998 where Vernon's all, Vernon bloodied Patrick Waugh pretty good. Yeah. And I, I, my friend Rick Bonus, who also works in our PR coordinator, you know, is our PR coordinator, who basically said, well, like, do you remember? Patrick Waugh won the fight. And I go, I don't care. Yeah. Hockey fights are the porn of social media. It just <laughs> works. It works. And your fans love it and your fans respond to it. And I joke, you know, uh, talking to, you know, our reporter who some fans think that who's on the fourth line makes a big difference. But the majority of them, I could stick a cat in a Red Wing sweater and, and have you it chase like its own tail. <laughs> and the next thing you know, I got a viral video. So like part of it is understanding is that the Commodore space. You guys do that sometimes. <laughs> you guys post, like, just... To alter memes to fit the Red Wings. Exactly, exactly. So it's about Cromwell under walking over um, yep. Leonardo DiCaprio on the Titanic. Oh yeah, that was one of those ideas where it was hundredth anniversary of Titanic. And I'm like, is this too soon? You know, no, tragedy <laughs> too soon. Years. But um, it, yeah, it is about engaging with the platform and understanding what your audience wants. And, and I see so many brands screw up and post something that is for their self interest. It's one thing if we're posting in our self-interest and I'm taking, you know, we're making revenue off of it. Yeah. But if we're not and it's lame and it, it, it just it doesn't just, work. It just comes yeah. off as lame. It doesn't come off as uh, engaging. So what it's about... boring. You, you said, you s- I, I think you said funny. I think like that's that's always a safe way to go. Yep. Um, besides funny, is there any other like go-to ways uh, about it? I mean, we, we all know funny works. What's we, are in, uh, we are in the entertainment business, uh-huh. and that exists on social. Yes. Social is an entertainment medium, more so than an informational medium, despite what a lot of people think. Mm-hmm. Entertainment does well on social better than anything else. Well, with the exception of maybe girls posting their engagement photos online <laughs> and <laughs> saying, oh or my God, pregnant babies, yeah. pregnant babies, pregnant babies, pregnant babies, yeah, those are the things that I think, uh, those are the self-important <laughs> things that no one really cares about that drive people crazy, but um, <laughs> if we're funny and uh, if we're portraying our players out to be superheroes or bigger than life or more accessible than anything else, that's really how we've approached it, and 
you know, I think going forward, you'll see more teams start to get it and take that approach, especially, you know, as Facebook's algorithm basically rewards those who do so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's important to be funny. We're an entertainment business. Our job is to entertain. And um, thankfully, our ownership is a little bit on the older side and may not be as familiar with this. So we're able to push the brand where it needs to be pushed because a younger audience can see right through many traditional themes of marketing and advertising. Do, do, do you find that like a younger audience is just much more savvy when it comes down to um, like a BS detector or anything like that? Uh, if I were to teach a course on public relations, I would call it, you know, Tiger Woods versus Charles Barkley. Why <laughs> one is damaged forever and the other is untouchable. <laughs> and it's funny because Charles Barkley is the one who could get pulled over for a DUI and everyone's like, oh, that's just Charles being Charles. Tiger Woods? Well, Tiger Woods' reputation is sadly damaged forever because you portray yourself as the Stepford Live, and when things go wrong, yep. you can't exactly turn the table and apologize. No. It's easier to screw up and apologize than to try and be perfect and screw up. Mm -hmm. That's it's harder to walk back from it. It is. Um, what about, uh, let's turn the, the, turn the page a little bit towards uh, promotions and kind of how do you take this social media an online form of communication to turn into a promotion where you actually get to interact with these people um, face to face I know you guys do a lot of cross marketing with the ticket um, meet us wherever and you yep. get free tickets and um, how does does that return on investment work for you guys or? it's it's a pivotal return on investment because ultimately your goal with social media and really I call it interactive media because ultimately mm -hmm. the goal is to take it from behind a screen to in person mm -hmm. whether that be with merchandise or tickets or, or player appearances mm -hmm. so for us to get into the ticket game we put together this thing called social Saturday and the real crux around it was it was a ticket deal it was mm -hmm. a discounted ticket so for a younger consumer the biggest problem with hockey is that a younger consumer it's not the friendliest price point mm -hmm. yeah your friendly price point is at Michigan and Michigan State where from a hockey perspective you pay 10 bucks you go you sit you, you may drink a little bit afterwards you may tailgate before we don't have that same opportunity our our season ticket base and it's you know facts are facts people don't want to put it out there but it's a higher middle class ticket base given mm -hmm. the pricing so for a family of four, it's not the easiest thing to do, and we understand that, and this is why that was created. And it turned out, crea you know, it turned out to drive, I think, over 4,000 tickets or somewhere close to 4,000 wow. tickets in just hours, hours at a time. So it's little blips here and there, but your fans are they're so grateful for the opportunity yeah. because once you get them in the building, that's the best way to see our game. It's the best way to see our sport. It's the best way to interact with it. There's no. nothing like live hockey. There, there's kind of like a, a cool, like you have, I, I don't know if I want to say a luxury, you have a, a tax basically on you because you are managing the Red Wings, you know, like <laughs> they are one of the original six, blah, 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 you know, they are the Red Wings. Now, a lot of people are approaching it from a different angle. They're like, okay, I am the young startup company, I'm trying to be disruptive, I'm trying to get out there. What... Uh, have you been on the other end? Could, do you have any differences between that that, yeah, would, that we can know, apply? Yeah, it was funny. I came to Detroit from a company called Her Campus Media in Boston, and they're basically a college marketing and content site where they operate. Content is the crux of uh, is the really the basic of what they do. Mm -hmm. But what they do is they say we have an audience of eighteen to twenty four year old women mm -hmm. that are very hard for marketers to get through traditional means of advertising, but we also know if you get one sorority girl, you probably have 40. And that was some of what I took to Detroit and said, listen, we're not gonna get a kid from East Lansing to buy a pair of season tickets, yeah. but we may get a sorority girl from East Lansing that has never seen a hockey game before, that comes down because her boyfriend is here to talk about with her two best friends yeah. who are in the sorority, hey, this hockey thing isn't a bad, you know, isn't a bad take. Maybe we should go to a game or maybe we should go to a Michigan State game. So that type of consumer has always been on the table. It's just a matter of how you approach it. And I think sports teams are getting more into that targeted marketing and placement that traditional businesses, that smaller businesses have relied upon for years. You're seeing more of that enter the sports world mm -hmm. uh, because they see the value of this stuff. They see the value of how connected consumers are they see the value of how many fans are checking into a building nowadays mm -hmm. and they realize that man how do we get that fan to come back and it's it's different than sending them an email now no. now it's reaching out to them and saying we hope you had a great time you know here's a ticket deal based on I read a story yesterday from Target who basically 
tracked what this girl was buying. Oh, this yeah, yeah. 16 year old girl was buying, and Found then they realized that she was pregnant. And then they <laughs> congratulated her on her first kid before, before the dad even knew. Like, that's the kind of intelligence you're starting to see with this yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I Facebook stalk all the time. I'm not going to, like, not <laughs> deny it because it helps me understand my consumer and my targeted consumer Absolutely, better. Yeah. And who could be that influencer I in that type of setting? And, you know, colleges are the best place for that type of growth. So that's where I took that her campus model and brought it to Detroit. Very good. Very good. Um, it, how about, what are your favorite um, social media campaigns out there right now? Whether brand-wise, personal brand? Well, do you want there? me to be honest and probably embarrass myself? Yeah, oh, no. Oh, I don't, I'm not sure. I plug my ears if I'm, if I'm a Red Wings fan. Carly Ray Jeps. <laughs> That was a start. Uh, I <laughs> love Carly Rae. Uh, I thought that took off out of nowhere, and it was middle of February, and I saw that video with Bieber and uh, Selena and Ashley Tisdale in it, and I sent it to Barstool Sports, and I go, listen, uh, Selena Gomez has a banana, and is, and Ashley Tisdale was just hot for four minutes. You know, <laughs> it's going to be the next big thing, and the next thing you know, it's on Barstool Sports, and the next thing you know, there's uh, 20 million views. Yeah. <laughs> But just trying to explain that through my own office was like, what the heck is this? And I'm telling you, I'm like, it's going to work. Look at the two <laughs> stars or look at the three stars. Look at their power and look at the audience. But mm -hmm. realistically, as, as great of an example as that was for Carly's career, I'm a big fan of Lululemon. I'm a big fan of Victoria's Secret Pink. I think those are two companies in retail that their goal is to get your consumers excited enough about your product to buy it. Mm -hmm. And Lulu, the, the best example I have is I started paying attention through figure skaters. I follow figure skaters and gymnasts who all love the gear. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here like, they're not getting paid for this. Mm -hmm. It's a free endorsement. Yeah. And then I realized our players wear it. We have Patrick Eves on the plane leaving a playoff game in San Jose holding the Lululemon bag. And I'm like, Oh my God! Like they mm -hmm. have got everyone. Yeah. yeah. Here are athletes, and we have deals with Reebok and Under Armour, and here are athletes wearing Lululemon, including Nick Lidstrom. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing from a word of mouth campaign, what they're doing from a social campaign, I mean, you can look on a Lululemon store website at free yoga classes where you can go into Lululemon and take a yoga class that's worth twenty bucks. That's the kind that's of true. positive brand image that works really, really well. And for me as an investor, I mean, once I started hearing Sarah and Emily Hughes talk about it, I invested in Lululemon and I made a lot of money off of it. No. Good yeah, call. I mean, <laughs> when you give out free things like that, like the, even just free classes, which really don't cost them much to do, yeah. um, you really see a big return on investment. They're going to want to buy things. They're going to tell all their friends they're going to these free classes and drive more traffic into the store and, and drive more uh, traffic to their online sites and their stores. And it, it really is a... a a genius idea to do it that way especially when it is little cost to them and it's an attitude it's a mentality Lululemon has a mentality Victoria's Secret Pink has a mentality it's it's a campaign within a campaign and I think that's where a lot of businesses get it wrong where they think social is an extension of our website mm -hmm. no social is an attitude that you have that you are approaching this audience with and it's not going to be blatant marketing it's going to be an excitement about your product because this is what you want your product to represent. Mm -hmm. This is the mentality of your product. This is the overarching theme of your product. For us on social, it is you know for the fans, by the fans. We want to showcase fans' work. We showcase a fan every day. Mm -hmm. uh, we cater to our fans and their interests on those mediums, and that's why we're so successful, is that we understand that you have to have an overarching concept with the way you approach this that is different than where you approach everything else. That's that's great, and, and like I said, you guys have continued to do an awesome job, and I'm sure you will continue in the future. And um, what about off season? So, what do you guys have going on uh, since it's off season? How do you keep your fans engaged and keep everyone and? Right. Well, you know, as, as sad as it was to see Nick Lidstrom retire, it did make us the most active social network and basically professional sports for yeah. a week. Wow. Um, <laughs> including, <laughs> this was during the Stanley Cup final where there's, you know, 150,000 interactions on the Red Wings page and the Kings and the Devils combined were in about 140. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you have those kind of things that keep you through the summer. It's difficult. I think during the summer you look for anything and everything that stands out. You dig back into your history. You dig into your championships. The, most of our fans do remember 97 and 98 vaguely. Most of them really remember 02 and 08. Mm -hmm. So you dig back into the things that happened there that may stand out. Fights. I mean, fights are a tremendous one. Mm -hmm. Everyone loves a hockey fight. Who doesn't? 
except for maybe Switzerland. But <laughs> y you look into those kind of things that really get your fans and get your fans engaged and get your fans excited. Uh, when we had, you know, Justin Bieber posing in a Red Wings hat because it matched the color of his shoes and because Big Sean's wearing Red Wings stuff everywhere, it was uh, the most talked about thing on our social media did for Justin Bieber a couple do it? days. Did Justin Bieber do it because he wanted to do it? Or did someone ask him to do it? I don't know. We did, kind did of we damage the brand at it. Huh. it. <laughs> did it damage the brand at all with uh, a male no. audience? No. There is no. <laughs> see, the male audience. They don't care because they're fans. It, the male audience is not going to not like us because Justin Bieber <laughs> is wearing a Red Wings hat. And if they do, they probably need to be smacked <laughs> silly. Because. <laughs> yeah, you could call him a poser and you could make all those references, but the point is is that the 14-year-old girl who saw that was like, oh my god, it's Bieber and he's wearing a red hat. Red hat. And there's a Where season ticket holder right? right there. And there's a future, you yeah, know, right. uh, <laughs> they'll sell some hats yeah. based on that. Yeah. You know, the next thing you know, Big Sean's on the Today Show wearing a Red Wings hat and I'm just sitting here like, yeah, that, that's a that's a nice little free yeah, ad right there. Right you know, there. How much is that? What's the return on investment in terms of, you know, today's show, advertisement, two minutes and 30 seconds? What's that, $50,000, $100,000? I don't even know. So it's a it's a nice giant free ad when you see Justin Bieber on PerezHilton.com <laughs> wearing a Red Wings hat because half the people are like, what's the hat he wearing? And then the other half is like, Bieber was I a Red Wings fan? <laughs> I have no idea. It's really just because it matched his shoes that day? That's my guess because I saw him in a Blackhawks hat two weeks later or two weeks later and was black and he had black shoes on. Uh -huh. So he had red and red. So this is what I'm guessing here. Though, you know, I kind of would like to see him at the Winter Classic representing his, I guess he's a Maple Leaf fan growing up and kind of like to see us make a play for Kate Upton who's got ties to Michigan and mm -hmm. just sort of take those two, two of the biggest viral acts going right now and yeah. turn that into a Winter Classic angle. But we'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what's to come with the Winter Classic. I'm sure you guys have a lot up your sleeve for that, and it's a great opportunity for uh, Detroit and the Red Wings, and I'm sure it'll go well. I, I think already you're starting to see how excited fans are for the event. I mean, it's uh, ultimately, and I hate to I hate to make it this simple, it's a hockey game between two teams that are still 60 to 65 minutes long, and there may or may not be a shootout at the end of it, <laughs> and everything that, that's building around it is... I mean, it's like a gigantic fashion show. You know, ultimately it's about the clothes, but it's really about who's there and who wants to be seen. And, you know, what's the setup like and what's the room look like and what's all that stuff look like. It's, it's an event. Mm -hmm. And as an event, there are certain things that are going to work really well on social as you start installing the rink at, at the University of Michigan, as you start to unveil the uniforms. And, and the beauty of it is that I've been through it before. I saw it work in Philadelphia and um, obviously went through it in Boston in 2010. So you're going to start to see a lot of those things pop up. I know the uniforms will be an extremely big deal. Mm -hmm. And I know when mm -hmm. we pin the uniforms right before Christmas, that'll be a coveted item yeah. on yeah. a lot of people's lists. And I know because they're, they're trying to work towards the largest attendance, correct? Is that what that's the ultimate plan is? So that's the league's goal, yes. They want to they wanna do the biggest hockey game of all time. So Social is going to play a like, big role in making sure you spread the word on getting people there well i don't know if social is going to spread the word because the word's pretty much already out and you're going to sell this thing out regardless and you have you know season ticket holders already you know buying tickets and already very excited about it i think what it's, social it's do is, is supplement it yeah i was going to say d do you see it being more of something to push merchandise at that point it will be i believe i remember hearing that the per cap meaning the dollars that get spent mm -hmm. at in the venue with the winter classic is the highest for a hockey event and um, and then the other thing is when you team that up with the holidays, mm -hmm. it's really a tremendous win for the sport. And one of those things where you're going to have people so excited about it where, yeah, social will play a role in it. Mm -hmm. But I think it's more of we get supported a lot more this time around because this is such a big event, because it is so exposed, than if we were to say, you know, do something at training camp. Mm -hmm. I think which the bigger challenge is how do you make a development camp where you may have one player that people know about as exciting as the Winter Classic? How mm -hmm. do you engage around that quite on the same capacity? The Winter Classic is easy in terms of social. Do, do you it's ever big. It's talked about. Do you ever have an event or a, a story that you just have to take a knee on? Like, listen, we do not, we're not going to cover this. We're not going to go through on this. What what kind of stuff would spark that? Um, really, anything that is of conf the the one benefit, and I always argue that we're in direct competition with the free press and the Detroit News as a website mm -hmm. and as a as an entity on social. But the one thing they can do that we can't, and I think it's an important 
position for social and for social and teams, we can't analyze that well. Yeah. I mean, we can't go after game one of the playoffs and the whole thing between Shea Weber and Henrik Zetterberg happens. <laughs> we can't go there, you know, with a giant poster of uh, Shea Weber and a wanted oh. $1 million <laughs> dead or alive. That's something that the free press can do. It's something that the news can do. They can speculate on trades and they can speculate on free agency. Lord knows they've been doing it for the last two months now. So that's something where we have to step back mm -hmm. and we have to realize that the one thing the news has, you know, the traditional media has over it is they can analyze things. Mm -hmm. The one thing we have over them is we control our own information. Yeah. So it's finding that balance. And I think we can monetize the flow of our own information. And that's one of the battles, obviously, I face on a day-to-day -day basis. But we can't monetize and we can't go down the, the speculation and the rumor mill and mm -hmm. the trade deadline. Who what might happen? Who might sign there? You know, how we can't engage on that level. But we can control our own information and we can make money off that. And, um, you know, that's one of those things you'll start to see teams c take control of. And as that happens, media will adapt. I think media will become more analytical, mm -hmm. uh, especially in newsprint, as the teams decide to report their own information. Great. I, uh, we really appreciate you stopping by and doing, taking time to do an interview with us. But I know there's a big party in happening, party happening. So we'll let you go. And thanks for stopping by. Thank you so oh, much no problem. Time. Thank you for having me. Yep.